Hey, what's going on YouTube? And welcome back to all my Cloud Scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross, and I am the founder of Cloud Scholars. I want to create this page. Um, I want to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy day uh, to spend it with me. Uh, today, what we're going to talk about is, you know, what are management groups in Azure and why they are so important. But before I get to that, I want to really want to say thank you all for subscribing to the page. The page has grown. I've been doing this for a little bit over a year now. Um, and the page is growing and I want it to continue to grow. So please uh, like, share, and subscribe to this page. Um, also, it just really feels really good to be in the seat because it's been a little while. I have been extremely busy. I've got a new client that I'm working with. So I'm working on fixing up their uh, Off365 environment as well as doing some stuff, special stuff in Azure for that client. Um, and if you all are having any issues within your environment or you're looking for some type of consultation, uh, please reach out to cloudscholarslearning at gmail.com. You can send me a message and I will be responding back to any inquiries. So I just want to put that out there and say thank you all for uh, watching these videos. So what are management groups you know, and why are they so important? So uh, essentially, you know, uh, your management groups within Azure are there for a couple of different reasons, right? Um, they provide hierarchy for your organization, right? Um, you also get uh, centralized governance. Uh, they provide simplified administration, uh, policy enforcement, uh, rollback, access control, and cost management. There are some of the benefits of your uh, management groups, but management groups are essentially containers, right? So you have your management groups uh, within Azure. The first one that you will have is your tenant root group. That's one that comes straight out the box. Um, and then you need to create your management groups from that point on. But they're so important for your environment. You know, a lot of people don't really use management groups and they'll set everything up at the root management level. And it's really not best practices, right? Your root management level, you don't really want to put anything in root management level except for stuff like for compliance, uh, certain policies that you want to propagate throughout the whole environment. But you want to have different management groups for different landing zones and the different subscriptions. So let's get in front of the computer because it'll probably make more sense if I show you to do a slide. So this first diagram really quickly is this a management group and you see the top it says corporate IT. Then you have different management groups where you have your production, you have your development and your Q&A. Now with management groups is, is tailored for your environment. So with this what I'm showing you right now is something that I just pulled from Microsoft site. And you have below your management groups you have your subscription. So you have your mission critical, your protected data, other production that's within the production management group and then in your development management group you have your non-production and then in your q a right you have a staging landing zone right and uh right there below if we jump back over to production management group you can see within the mission critical one you have app one app two app three and then in the other landing zone because what landing zones are essentially subscriptions right so you have protected data in that subscription slash man, uh, landing zone, and you have app four, app five, and then in other production subscription, you have app six. So that's pretty much how you would set up your landing zones, right? But let's get into a little bit more back to what we were talking about, where we were talking about the benefits, right? I've named hierarch hierarchical uh, structure, centralized governance, uh, simplified administration, I said policy enforcement and role-based access control and cost management. So if we will look at this slide here, this slide here, we have a tenant root group. And then below it, we have four management groups. We have a MG prod management group. We have an MG sandbox, so prod is production. Then sandbox is for testing. Then we have an MG development, right? So that's another management group as well. And then you have an MG decommission. That is all your different subscriptions that you are no longer in use. So as I mentioned before, the tenant root group is where you really don't want to put anything except for things like compliance. So if you look at the top where it says regulatory compliance and you have policies and tagging, you can now say, okay, the regulatory compliance we need to follow throughout the whole organization. And you could, I don't know, you might want to say a NIST 853. You can apply it at that level. Then policies, there are certain policies that you want to have propagate throughout the whole organization. You can apply it there. Now, you don't have to do that. I'm just showing you an example. Then you have tagging. So you may have certain tags that you're like, 
every all these resources need to have these tags and then you'd apply it at this level now most of the time you'll probably be applying this to regulatory compliance at that level and you might not be doing any policies or you may be doing policies but tagging is something a little more specific and you might want to drop that down to your um, production environment or your other management groups now if you have certain things at the tenant root group doesn't mean you can't do them at the lower levels and i'll explain so mg underscore prod right here we have this regulatory compliance here and within this regulatory compliance um, we can have a different one so if we did nist 853 at the tenant root group we can apply another regulatory compliance at the mg prod let's say if you wanted to do one of the isos 2700 or you wanted to do hipaa you can do that at the regulatory compliance for mg prod and then here you can have other policies and other tagging that is germane to this management group so the subscription one subscription two would follow and adhere to these uh different this regulatory compliance the policies and tagging in mg underscore sandbox you can have another regulatory compliance if you wanted and you can have different policies and tag in here and then this is subscription test so for instance if that's a test environment you may have some type of uh policy to make sure that the network doesn't talk to anything in production so you don't want any type of VP vpc pairing you can do something like that then in MG development, you can say, all right, I don't really want a regulatory compliance here because I'm just doing development. I really want to really freely, you know, make sure that I can just test out whatever I need to test out. Now, you might be saying, well, what's the sandbox for? Sandbox is just really going to follow your production environment. So you may say I'm going to do the same regulatory compliance in sandbox as in prod because I want to test things out. Now, development might just be a free for all. I don't care. I'm just making some changes, but I do want to make sure that development doesn't talk to certain uh, environments in terms of a network perspective. So that's where the policies would take place. And you may do tagging or you may take it out and say, I don't want to do any tagging. Totally up to you. And then you have MG underscore decommission. Decommission, this is all your old subscriptions that you know you're keeping just for regulatory compliance. Excuse me just to make sure that you are compliant right for compliance reasons and you may have some policies and tagging over there as well okay so that is pretty much it you know i think that that explanation it really should crystallize what management groups are for you uh, if you have any questions or anything like that i'm more than happy to answer in the comment section but i wanted to really just have a discussion with you around management groups um, I have talked to a bunch of different clients and it's surprising to me that, you know, the management groups, it seems like something that people don't really fully comprehend, right? But once you break it down to them, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. I understand. You know, is this something that people just don't really use, right? They probably just set up resource groups and they really focus on that foundation of Azure where it comes to resource groups, not saying that that's not important, but resource groups, this is just another container. For you to now keep certain resources all together so that this way you can now say okay this is the cost or this is the policy that's going to be applied to this resource group but then you when you get to a certain point portion then you're doing subscriptions where subscriptions is good but you have a lot of different resources within your subscriptions so another way to break it down is from the hierarchy standpoint you have management groups where you now can now make sure that your environment is safe and you are securing it and then making constraints in certain areas of your management groups so for instance, you may have a management group of resources in another region. So that region now has to follow different regulatory compliance. So it's really important to think about, you know, when you're deploying resources, where it's being deployed, who needs access to it, you know, how long you need access to it. All these things come into play, but management groups are extremely important. I would suggest that you start using them, even if you were to just go into your Azure tenant right now. And then start setting up management groups is really um, important for you to go ahead and do that and it's really simple to uh, work with management groups right so let's jump into and sh let me show you exactly how you would go about creating and setting up a management group all right once you get into the azure portal uh once you sign in just type in management groups up here uh, when you type in management groups you'll get to this page where it says management groups and you can see here, I have uh, my different management groups. I have another subscription here um, as well. But all you're doing when you need to create a new management group is you can click this plus sign up here, click create, and I can just call it MG underscore 
uh, for YouTube. And the MG really is um, just best practices um, for a naming convention. Um, so right here, I just threw that in there as a display name and I hit submit. And you see here, you have MG underscore YouTube, right? Um, so now let's just say if I wanted to create a child group here, I can, or I can add a subscription here, I can too. If I go back to create um, as well, you know, say create a new manager group to be a child of tenant root group. I wanted to call that out for you. So, so you saw that it says under the tenant root group, right? Um, you can do that. Or if I wanted to say, okay, let me move this. I can move this or I could create a child group here. So if I wanted to create a child group of a management group here, I can go here. And as you see right here, it says create a new management group to be a child of MG underscore for YouTube. So that's how you would create child management groups. You would make sure you do it that way and you put the information in here as well. Or if I wanted to move this or I can say add a subscription here, I can move a subscription here or I can move this. And if I wanted to move this, I could say the new parent management group would be, and then it would be test underscore MG, because that's really the only other management group that I have here. And I could go ahead and I could move it and I could click save. And then now you see it's no longer a child of tenant root group, even though it still is a child of tenant root group, it's just not a direct child of it. Uh, test MG is a direct child of tenant root group. And then under here, MG underscore for YouTube is a direct child under tense MG. And let's say if I'm like, I don't want that managed group anymore, I could just easily come here and I could click delete and I could go ahead and I could delete that management group. So that is essentially it. That is, is a, a nice quick video. I think I stayed under 15 minutes, hopefully, not really sure. But this is a nice quick video of how you can go about and create management groups and just talk to you about what management groups are. You know, let me know exactly in the comments how you're feeling about management groups. You know, if there's anything else that you feel like, you know, uh, you're having a question or something you're not understanding, uh, please leave it in the comments section below. As always, I wanna thank you all for spending the time with me and watching this video. Um, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like or subscribe button. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.